The objective of this lesson is to bring meaning to two different approaches to the division of fractions, the common denominator algorithm and the invert and multiply algorithm. The common denominator algorithm is a useful strategy for dividing fractions. In the problem 8 divided by 2, the question is, how many 2's are in 8? It is the same with fractions. In the problem 8 thirds divided by 2 thirds, the question is, how many 2 thirds are in 8 thirds? In both cases, the answer is 4. When the divisor and the dividend have the same denominator, we are working with the same size pieces, so the size of the pieces is not important. The underlying question is always how many blanks are in blank. Let's look at a problem. Joe needs one-eighth of a board for each shelf. He has three-fourths of a board. How many shelves can he make? Analyzing the problem, we see that the whole is three-fourths of a board, which is the dividend. We want to divide it into eight sections so that each section is one-eighth of a board. So one-eighth is the divisor. We will be looking for the quotient, which is how many shelves he can make. We know how much is in a group and we need to find out how many groups we will have. The question will be how many one-eighths are in three-fourths. Here is what a bar model might look like. Underneath that bar, we can represent one-eighth by partitioning the same size bar into eight units and shading in one of the eighths. Notice it takes two of the one-eighths to make one-fourth, so we can partition the three-fourths bar into eighths, making the equivalent fraction of six-eighths, then count the number of eighths in six-eighths. We have made each of the fourths into eighths, creating a common unit to be compared. There are six one-eighths in six-eighths, so Joe can make six shelves with three-fourths of his board. We could continue the same strategy to a problem that doesn't contain a unit fraction. What if the problem read, Joe needs three-eighths of a board for each shelf? He has three-fourths of a board. How many shelves can he make? The question would be, how many three-eighths are in three-fourths? We can use the same bars, but instead of coloring in one-eighth, we would color in three-eighths. The common unit is eighths, and the answer to our problem would be, Joe can make two shelves with three-fourths of his board. The invert and multiply algorithm is very helpful with the partitive or sharing interpretation of division. Let's try a problem. A pan of brownies is one-third full. If the remaining brownies are shared with four people, how much of the original pan does each person get? The division equation is one-third divided by four equals b. Let's draw a fraction strip or bar model. The bar is the whole and we'll divide it into thirds. One third of the pan is colored blue. We need to share with four people, so we'll divide each third into fourths, so we will have even pieces. Since there are three thirds and each has four sections, then three times four of those parts make up a whole. So one third divided by four equals one over three times four, which is one twelfth. One of these parts is one twelfth of the whole. Each person gets one twelfth of the original pan of brownies. Let's review both approaches to fraction division. The common denominator strategy for solving fraction division is built on the patterns found in the quotative or measurement interpretation. Three fourths divided by two fifths can be changed to have a common denominator. We can make it fifteen twentieths divided by eight twentieths, which equals 15 divided by 8. The invert and multiply algorithm is a strategy for solving fraction division problems that involves multiplying the dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. Two-thirds divided by four-fifths goes to two-thirds times five-fourths, which is ten-twelfths, which can be changed to an equivalent fraction of five-sixths. The objective of this lesson was to gain background information needed for two different approaches to the division of fractions, the common denominator algorithm and the invert and multiply algorithm. The objective was met by modeling both approaches. Further learning on these approaches will be taught in the upcoming videos.